Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Boy. Boy. Ian, say hi again. Hi. <laughs> Jake's also here. Hello. Um, sorry, I was thrown off because I played the music, and I can't tell if I just haven't adjusted this OBS thing in a while, and the music low, or something else in the music is low, but it doesn't really matter because local chat is here, folks. Episode 52. Um, it's not quite a year in time but it is quite a year in numbers of episodes that equals the numbers of weeks in a year uh 52 episodes i never thought we would do it i know ian certainly didn't think we would ever do it i you know i think scan lines ended at 45 46 so i think this is the longest series we have uh halo halo let's play probably second place with about 13 14 episodes that's definitely up there uh as we slowly change the difficulty settings to easy <laughs> over multiple episodes yes. um because we wanted to get it over with um just like the show just we want like, to get it over I with think, i think my favorite thing about towards the end of that playthrough we had like three missions left we'd been recording for a year and we were just like wait a minute we could do this co-op remote with the master chief collection because <laughs> up to that point we we'd only been filming in person and we lived three we lived three hours apart at that time and it was just like oh well let's just finish this and we just did the last three missions <laughs> on a saturday we were so stupid <laughs> it was stupid um that was back when we thought recording over the internet was dumb because there wasn't a pandemic yet um and speaking of pandemics jake uh how many people have you killed no um i'm happy you're here hopefully I not any i feel like i haven't seen you in a while how were your how were your holiday festivities fine i got i got flown my <laughs> <laughs> they were fine my company in florida flew me down for their christmas party um, yes and i didn't nice. catch covid yay but they rented me a car and then there was some snafu with the car rental so i had to put it on my credit card and that's, um the rental good. cars do florida pay by plate so i took the toll road a couple of ways and it ended up being i just got the notification that they're like hey here's your you know invoice for the tolls you racked up it's 24 dollars in tolls how much do you think hertz i'm gonna call them out hertz charges in a convenience fee Oh, I feel like oh. it's like 15 bucks per day that you're told. Oh, that might be possible because it was like 17 something in a convenience fee. All, like almost yeah. as much as it was in the tolls. That's <laughs> yeah. outrageous. But I'm getting reimbursed for it. So Or so yeah. you think that's, that's your holiday bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when when my company, the only thing they paid for was the flight. And everything else you paid for yourself, and then they reimbursed you later with an expense report. But I loved that because when I was traveling heavily, I was racking up so many Southwest points with my Southwest credit card that Maggie and I were taking like five, six trips a year for no cost at all for the flights because I was using the points for my business travel. It was fantastic. That's wild. Be Speaking also, this is tangentially related. Speaking of credit cards, I have lived most of my life without one until like a month and a half ago. It's crazy. Oh, no. Yeah. Just before, essentially just before I went on this trip, Hazel and I got a credit card. And I don't understand how it calculates whatever. Because it was like checking my credit score dropped my score eight points and then filing for a credit card dropped at six points putting the rental car on the credit card not yet paying for it just like getting it on the card up 111 points <laughs> yeah 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 it's like credit scores are wonky but it's also like it's also like we want you to use credit but you also got to pay it off immediately mm -hmm. as opposed to like the worst thing you could do with your credit score is never open any lines of credit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I learned that early because I, when I went to New Zealand, I got a credit card because just so I had like a credit card in a foreign country or something. So in case like my debit wasn't working. Um, and I'm glad I did that because I built up enough credit by paying stuff and like getting reimbursed through like work and stuff that it eventually got me to a point where it's like i have good credit even though for like some of my credit card years i was really not paying them off or using another <laughs> credit card to pay them off uh which now it's like 
like I'll get emails where it's like, hey, you can spend twenty thousand dollars this month, and I'm like, I have nothing to spend twenty thousand twenty thousand dollars on, but thank you. <laughs> um, it's just it's credit cards are stupid. Yeah, um, so that was my Christmas, flying to Florida and getting a credit card. I'm glad you. That sounds like. I mean, that honestly sounds like the perfect Christmas. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> Uh, folks, we're here to talk about video games, and who better to talk about video games than the three of us? Uh, we Bye. play a lot of them. Uh, I'm going to go first here. Uh, it's been a while. Like, the past couple episodes are, like, pre-recorded and stuff, so I feel like nothing. I, like, I've played a lot of video games, but I also haven't played a lot of video games. More Pokemon Fire Red, of course. Um, Love it. I, I kind of recapped that on the Pokemon episode yesterday, so go check that out. Um, and I played a little bit I more. Will say, I think you're up to six badges, so you're making yes. good progress. Good if progress. You guys want more details on that? Go check out Pokey Will. Yes, go check it out. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. It's the excitement slowing down a little bit. Like last time, it was like heroin between episodes, where I was like maxing it out as much as I could, like as fast as I could. Mm-hmm. But now it's. Uh, thank you. Now it's like. Um, now it's like it's like yeah, cocaine. <laughs> it's like caffeine. <laughs> um, so I'll play it like intermittently now or late at night or uh, when I have to cram for a sales call. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, and then while I wasn't able to play more Pokemon because I got into Fuchsia City, which was the stop over Christmas break, I started playing Golden Sun, which is a JRPG from. Uh, Natsume, I think it's by the Harvest. I think it's by the Harvest Moon people. Um, I thought it was. By, I thought it was from the uh, Kirby people. I'll, I'll maybe you're right. I I can't remember. Anyways, it's uh, I played a little bit of it. Uh, maybe four or five hours, and I'm genuinely enjoying it. It's a fun JRPG. It's got like this weird that people explained it when I looked it up as Pokemon, but you get like these Jin Jin. <laughs> like the genie oh, the name ghosts. and so yeah. they like you like set them on your character and then you can you can attack with them and when once you attack with them you charge up whatever element they're made of and then you use you mm-hmm. summon that element to do an even bigger attack afterwards and then the next round you have to reset them back to yourself so you kind of like lose around but you get a super powerful attack it's really fun um it's the first like RPG or JRPG in a like from that era that I really haven't checked a guide that often. Um, oh, that's good. Despite that's the game good. not having a journal or anything, like I'm paying attention to people I'm talking to and being like, oh, someone mentioned that. Let me head over this way. Um, so it's been fun. The only annoying thing is it's only on the Game Boy, which is fine. Uh, but it's kind of like I can only play it on that versus. I guess I could put it on my computer, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I'm having fun. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with it. I might have fallen off of it now that I'm able to play more Pokemon. It was kind of in that, that dead zone, but I may go back to it. Um, developer of Golden Sun was Camelot of the Camelot. Mario Tennis That's Mario what it was. Golf series. Yes, because when I saw it, I thought of that. I can't believe I forgot. Uh, and then finally, uh, for Christmas, I got the Banner Saga game trilogy. Uh, and I have loaded that onto my Xbox. And boys and girls, I don't know if you know this, but that game rips the first Banner it's Saga. Good. It's it looks so great. good. Great storytelling. It's great I, storytelling. Good soundtrack. The combat didn't grab me, but I don't think it's the game's fault. I think it's just me not being very particular about my turn-based combat systems. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed the the couple hours I spent with that game. Yeah, they explain the combat system perfectly, but I did not understand it until like two hours in, which the the system for people don't know, it's grid based, uh, t- like turn based combat, a la Heroes of Might and Magic. And uh, you can't or Final Fantasy Tactics, whatever. Uh, there's armor and strength. Strength is their health. The more armor you take down, the more one hit can do for strength. Or you can just focus and try to take all their health down. And kind of once I learned that concept, I realized I could use a bunch of characters to pick off someone's armor and then have the big 
guy go in and smash all his health down because he's able to do such a big mm -hmm. hit. <clears throat> and that sort of just clicked for me within the last probably hour I've played of it. And so I've been having a blast. The story's been kick butt the entire time. Um, you're kind of changing between these two groups of people, travelers. We're both traveling towards each other, but don't know of each other. And uh, you're kind of going through all the trials and tribulations. Uh, you're making choices. People will, will remember that choice. People die. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's, it's, I was trying to think of a way to explain it briefly uh, today. And it was basically Oregon Trail, but Game of Thrones-ish. Uh, Viking. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it's really fun. I'm having a blast with it. I... I do this with everything where I'm like, yeah, I'll play Banner Saga in two and three. Yeah, I'll do all that. Which right now, yeah, I'll do all that. But I'll probably make it through this game, want to play two and probably play a little bit of two and never touch them ever again. But for what it's worth, I'm having fun. Fun with you. video games. And I'm on vacation and just, you know, it's nice. Delightful. 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 Uh, I'm gonna skip you, Ian, and go to Jake because I want Jake to talk. Um, well, Jake, speaking of vacation, playing? I have been. I am now. Tomorrow will be the final eight hours of. Thank you, Ian, of the 96 <laughs> PTO hours I took at the end of this year. Nice. nice. Um, uh, which, regardless of what Ian has deleted on the Google document that we're all looking at right now, has meant that I have had a lot of time to play Destiny too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as happens, it's anytime I'm I'm on the show. Um, yeah, my brother and I have been playing a lot together because it's it's there's two events going on right now. It's the Christmas event, the dawning, and also the Bungie thirtieth anniversary event. Um, is good there stuff. is there Christmas in Destiny, or is it a or is it some it's other uh, the dawning? Yeah, it's is a it, non denominational space holiday. Yeah, it's no, still no, no, <laughs> tell me, tell me about the in-game lore. I want to hear about Destiny's fake Christmas. I know it's, you know it. I mean, it, it's not related to any sort of religious deity. Certainly, it's just a time of uh, reflection on the year and, and celebrating friendship with each other. You go around and you can cook. You can make dawning cookies that you can deliver to other NPCs around the game. Um. You can, it's in the normal, like, strike playlists and whatnot. You can kill enemies with snowballs oh, instead of with your guns. Oh, I remember guns, that. That is fun. Which is neat. Ian's not amused. I just, like, like I understand Destiny lore is great. It's also god-awful at servicing all that. So the only time I get hints of, like, good Destiny lore is when I talk to you, Jake. Mm. And I was expecting there to be, like, an incredible pseudo jesus dalai lama gandhi christmas lore story for destiny but it turns out they just put in a lot of useless junk mechanics in the game so all there's, a, the, there's also all, space all the, jesus like, where's my no, space no, no. jesus well nathan fillion well, in the manger <laughs> I hate he's nathan not Fillion. if if you're interested in any sort of like like sci-fi space religion i need my camera to focus on me <laughs> that stuff is all kind of unrelated to any of the player characters like the the religious uh, um the religious background of the hive particularly is deep and it's true. fascinating it's really cool. um like an, an actual theology class is worth of you know uh uh, like religious ceremony and and like there's holy texts which may mm -hmm. or may not be apocryphal in some cases depending on who it was that wrote them um it's great i just want i have the book Jesus. on my shelf they're still less <laughs> evil than the catholic church um <laughs> <laughs> space jesus i guess is technically the traveler but <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it resurrects you. <laughs> oh boy, that's pretty good. It gave its life to resurrect you. Man, to resurrect I'm start, you. I'm gonna start worshiping the traveler now. Um, any, Praise the sphere. Just because I have to cut this off. Anything other than <laughs> Destiny yes. Two? Uh, I played through Solar Ash, the sophomore release from uh, LA-based developers Heart Machine. Um, 
whom I love dearly. This is the first game of theirs you've played? Yes, I don't know if they've <laughs> released anything before this. There's something about like like Liper Liper Toop Run. Moving yeah, there was really that one quick. I kept telling you to play and you said you didn't want to. It was to like an auto scroll, it's kinda like Flappy speed. Bird. It was like a like oh, it was a Fury. 16 bit. <laughs> it's got a Fury, that's game. it, yeah. Um no. So <laughs> Hyperlight Drifter for anybody who may be listening and not in on the joke that I love Hyperlight Drifter and have played it all the way through maybe a dozen times now one time you know, one um, day <laughs> one day i'm gonna play that game and tell you that i hate it jake i'm one sure day, you will, game will that come, but I very in character <laughs> <laughs> um, i played it for 15 well, so, minutes on a flight and i've never got back to it <laughs> yeah so on that note i i played uh solar ash in uh seven and a half hours Nice. Which um, kind of surprised me initially because Hyperlight Drifter took me about 20-ish to beat. Oh. Um, but I think part of that is that Solar Ash is hugely bigger in scope in that it's a 3D game instead of a 2D game. Um, and it's, it's pseudo open world um, as opposed to, you know, like pixel corridors and all that. I liked mm. it. I don't know if I liked it as much as Hyperlight Drifter. I think I have to play it again because I wasn't necessarily sure what to expect from it. Yeah. Um, but the traversal is great. There's really not much by way of combat. Like Hyperlight Drifter had very tight, you know, combat, but this was really more about traversal. It's a bit of Shadow of the Colossus. It's a bit of Super Mario Galaxy, and it's a bit of like Sonic Adventure Two. Mm -hmm. Um all wrapped up in this yeah it's it's definitely interesting there's a lot of really good stuff cooking in there um yeah but i want to play through it again to see if my thoughts can solidify on it oh and it's fully voice acted which oh. hyperlight drifter had no oh. dialogue or text of any kind and suddenly here comes this i think they probably got i don't know how much money they got from annapurna um in that publishing deal um but like 3d open world fully voice acted it's way more going on than hyperlight yeah. drifter yeah. um that's wild but yeah and then i'm still playing islanders which i am about 300 hours i have sunk about 300 hours into that's the zumbinis uh people no that's the new york hockey team that's what google's telling me uh, really? the islanders that's a horrible <laughs> hockey team name actually you know what you know what's funny is i then typed in islanders game and now it's just showing me hockey scores Perfect. <laughs> oh what's the score i don't uh, one to three you heard that islanders here folks up. jake's given islanders for the windows pc one out of three but however let's go, let's go isles I don't the know what they're florida chances. solar bears is Ooh. perhaps a worse named hockey team <laughs> God, that is, what is it? Is it anything more than just a pun on polar bear? And the fact that Florida is a state that gets a lot of sunshine. It's I, I sunshine feel like all states state. get the equal amount of sun. But it's that's not true. But... State. Really. Oh no, Jake, this game looks really good. I need to... what? It, Islanders is a casual city building game. That's yeah, Ian, exactly what I wanted. I it's just great. I just did the same thing Ian did. I googled Islanders <laughs> and hockey scores <laughs> and came Islanders up. Game. <laughs> Wait, Islanders, the casual <laughs> city builder game. I just googled Islanders game. <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> say the say the hockey joke again. I, maybe the third time it's even funnier. I can't believe this I just. Looks, I shut up, Jake. <laughs> tell me how good this game is. It's really good. It's I didn't realize I'm gonna save a lot of my discussion for it for uh, a, a future thing that we are all a part of. Um, but it's, it's 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 oh charming. this oh this does qualify because I sorry I'm just looking at the release dates. It's 2019 on the Windows, but I guess that was early access. Came out on Switch and all the consoles August of this year. Oh yeah. no. Oh, no. um it's it's, it on sale? it's so um serene and and like i it's it's exactly what i needed in the at the the back half of this year and i think that's why i've played about 300 hours of a game in which i'm literally just putting little buildings onto procedurally generated islands Folks, and just uh, doing that over and over 
this game is currently dollar ninety nine on Steam. Oh, and I'm buying that now oh. in my library. I just <laughs> yeah, it. it's worth it. It's so good, and it's I, like there's levels to it of like you know the first the very mm-hmm. first one that you land on you're just like okay you know put buildings wherever but there is like you can play it in high score mode or sandbox mode and high score mode actually has a score system where each building is worth a certain number of points and can get more points onto that based on what other stuff you put it near like if you put a tavern near um a a, a brewery and houses it that it'll be more oh, points yeah. than if you put it next to like a bunch of mansions and a windmill or something um so there's like this like this b- the flower opening in your mind as you start like Bottom optimizing line. your little cities and not just optimizing them for points but also in like aesthetically pleasing where you're like well if i put mm-hmm. all the buildings this Please way me, daddy. yeah it's so good i love it so much i also purchased the Everybody watching this. Um, is it better than Townscraper? I'm, sh- I'm not shilling for Grizzly Games, but I kind I of think, am. Isn't Townscraper just like like a like a chill aesthetic tool in yeah, a way? Yeah, because I yes. played that. Townscaper, uh, Townscaper, uh, Oscar Oscar Stahlberg, friend of Subpixel, um, made that as like a tech demo. He he's like building procedural tools for you know generating grids and then starting to put like building stuff on top of it and it kind of got like a viral following enough that Raw Fury was like yeah let's package this as a game and it's also quite charming um but not uh that really is just like aesthetic whereas I think Islanders does have a bit more gameplay behind it okay cool. mm-hmm. I cool I will stuff. definitely. I'll definitely play that now. I I forgot the Steam sales going on because I checked it earlier today and I bought I bought two games, but in my brain I was like, oh sweet, some games of mine are on sale. Um, What'd you buy? What'd uh, I you bought buy? Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, classic. Ooh. Uh, and Good. the other game I bought, drum roll please, is Rings of Saturn. What? I don't know that one. It's like a indie game where you fly a spaceship and do missions i love it and Outer Wilds, got it, it looks great <laughs> no it's it's like really 2D. Dangerous. it's kind of like that high fleet game destiny got it uh, I anyways wish, i wish you could fly the spaceships in destiny i wish that game was better too jake i really do <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, i think this it's actually delta v rings of saturn is the full name Okay, oh, that is. I love it even more. Yeah, I would. Yeah. The person actually, you guys gotta look this up because the person on the Steam page looks like Ben Kingsley, and I need someone else like to a character. Say, Hold on, I look Delta like V they, Rings of you, Saturn. Okay, I'm pulling it up. Right There's now. like a guy with a goatee, oh, and a beard. I'm gonna try to that accidentally. Is, that not is Ben quit Kingsley. It's just it Ben Kingsley, Kingsley, right? Yeah, this does have a nice look to it. That also, it's not ben Delta V; it's Triangle V. I think it's supposed to right it's all great it delta. they just made an aesthetic choice to use the symbol delta instead of the word delta and, <laughs> physics based uh, mining sim yeah you gotta do something to stand out it looks like fun you know What's um fun? speaking of standing Dan, out i had a joke i had a joke in the in my torpedo <laughs> tube like we'll minutes ago okay let's let's wait for I it i can't remember it. yeah let's just wait let's for it though back. no i want to wait for it Anyways, moving on to the news. Just kidding. Wow, you can't even commit to your <laughs> bit. Got him. How long could we sit here? <laughs> Until your torpedo came out. Hey man, Until I don't played... remember the joke I was going to say. Hey, man, we played was it 24 ben hours of Roblox, and that doesn't even include the series. So. It doesn't even include the sorry. time that we faked. Sorry I couldn't participate. Yeah, oh, you were so busy. Uh, Ian, tell oh, me about the games you've been playing. Yeah, so um, like Jake alluded, we're we're gonna be talking about game of the year next next week. Uh, we're not picking a, our game of the year, but just our favorite games that came out this year. And so I've kind of been playing some catch up between prep for that, as well as just listening to all these game of the year podcasts from my favorite outlets, and um, also reading some real trash takes and lists coming out on uh, <laughs> Twitter. I'm looking at you, IGN Forza Horizon Five game of the year. Get that out of here. Uh, so, so I've, I've kind of been without running... ignorant. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it's a good joke. I knew it was coming. You've said it several times. It's just good. Um, 
So I've we have playing... to mention that Will works for GameSpot? <laughs> no, actually, he works for IGN. Um, That'd be funny if I worked for He made the list. <laughs> Anyways, um, I mean, you guys, GameSpot picked the wrong game, too. So, y'all idiots out there. <laughs> y'all wildin'. Anyways. But Valheim was on the best PC games list, I will say. That's my contribution that's, that's to good. society. That's good. Um, so I've been I've been trying to play some games that are in contention for game of the year based on popular uh, consent. Uh, number one is the gunk. Uh, this is a recent release from Image and Form. Uh, do you guys know the the Steam World, Steam World Dig, Steam World Heist, Steam World Quest series? You guys ever play any of those? I know of them anecdotally. Ooh, excuse me. They are. Um, I did not like Steam World Heist as much. I, I, I think it's more the, the style of gameplay. I, Karen played a lot of it. Oh, she, she loved it. I think that's one of the games she beat yeah. during a stream. <laughs> Behind yeah. me. And then um, Steam World Quest, I tried a little bit, but I, I only tried five minutes and then I and then I dropped it. Not because of the game, just because. Which I style I was, was that one? That's that's the card based RPG. Thing. Oh, right. Um, I think it's because I was playing it through Stadia, like it was free on Stadia for a day or something. I don't know. It was weird. Anyways, um, I played SteamWorld Dig 2 and SteamWorld Dig and SteamWorld Dig 2 are, are very well received because basically like when they make their games, it's not like they're making anything crazy revolutionary, but I'm trying to think of an analog. Like they just make a very good game where like every single game design decision in it is not revolutionary or crazy over the top you've never seen before, but it's the correct decision. So it's like they have an upgrade tree. You unlock upgrades at the correct rate. Every upgrade does something different. Every upgrade does a different mechanic. They teach you those mechanics. Those mechanics get you new areas. Like like they have perfected how to do the gameplay loop and they've kind of been bouncing between genres. Um, They're like a, a buy it for the... life company. Like They make good yeah. products and you can rely on yeah, it's just like solid, solid game design. So so they came around with a, a, their new release, The Gunk, which came out on Game Pass recently. Um, this is their first 3D game. Um, it looks beautiful. Uh, I've been playing on the Series X. And basically the premise in this one is that you and your partner, uh, you're on a spaceship and you're kind of scouting planets for resources to make money off of. Um, and you happen to come across this planet that has um, this weird gunk on it. And, and you basically have uh, the titular a, a, gunk. Yeah. The titular gunk. Um, <laughs> and you have like, like a vacuum that you use to suck up the gunk. And when you do it, like turns that area, it like brings back the pa- plant life from that area and pops all these resources. And the resources are, I mean, in the storyline, it's like those resources are worth money. So we're going to be rich now, but in reality you're gathering those resources to get upgrades and, and upgrade your tools and all this stuff. And it's it's really it's really good. It's it looks great. Um, the level of design is nice. Like you'll like you'll do a path, and then you come back around, and you'll like drop a shortcut ladder, and then you go, oh, my ship's right over there. So now I have a shortcut to this area. Like it's just like very well thought out, smart design, great reveals, great characters, and everything. I only played about an hour and a half of it, and I dropped it. And here's why: I think I just don't like the vacuum mechanic, and it's not this game it's it's just i don't i don't think i like vacuuming things in video games like that like what i'm trying to think off the top off the top of my head the only other thing i'm thinking of is luigi's mansion i can't necessarily come up with another video game with a vacuum mechanic it's like slime yeah slime Slime rancher Rancher. has it and i wasn't crazy about reverse that mechanic but um i think there's like a couple uh mario party mini games related to it where it's you know the idea is just like you're (laughs) gathering things and you're moving the cursor to gather them you know and it's just like i want to love this game what was (laughs) oh Uh, i i don't know i like like do you guys feel that same way about the vacuum mechanic or are there any other mechanics where it doesn't matter how well it's implemented you still just go i don't like doing this it's not super enjoyable oh this is you guys this think of was anything just this just happened to me like three or four weeks ago and now i can't remember what it was was it destiny like the entirety of destiny <laughs> <laughs> just kidding ian's other um, one is just when they put women in video games <laughs> you just no, can't I just do think it. Of like like fighting games like where you have to press up on the analog stick to jump up i hate um, doing that i like the option i hate doing that yeah, 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 yeah. I so it's just like one of those things where it's like it doesn't matter how well implemented the gunk is. 
I spent an hour and a half vacuuming things in that world. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm done with vacuuming because I'm just not crazy about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend if you're interested at all, check it out. It's very well designed. It looks beautiful. Go, go play some Steam World Dig, Steam World High, Steam World Quest. It just, you know, like you said, they're, they're a buy forever company. They don't make anything crazy, incredible over the top, but they make solid, solid video games. Like I feel like Steam World Dig 2 has like an average critic rating of like 90 plus because it's just a super solid game. Um, and it's a lot of fun to play. Um, next game. Uh, either of you guys heard of this game, Wildermyth? Yeah. I not. Pause for, for sip. I need to know okay. if I need to buy it. Um, so Wildermyth is, a, you know, it's similar to Banner Saga in a way. It is, it is turn-based grid fantasy combat. You have a party, um... And you're taking that party around a map and you're completing missions. And it, it's, I don't want to say it's split into campaigns, but the whole idea is that you're you are doing runs. Um, I'm not sure how the runs are completed. If it's like you've completed the basic storyline for this campaign or like there's an end state where all your party members die. Or if it's just like, hey, you have, you're going to do this for 20 in-game years or whatever. And then it's over. Um, but they kind of expect you to run through it multiple times. But the big thing about Wildermyth that um, has gotten it a lot of praise is the storytelling. Um, so it's it's a lot of, I don't want to call it choose your own adventure, but there's a lot of choice points. Like, for example, you roll your party at the beginning and they're like, who do you want your three main party members to be? And there's things like, oh, he's a poet. Or, oh, he's, uh, he's you know, an athlete. Or uh, he's like, he's like a, uh, a recluse, uh, a hermit. And you can set these options, and then the stories between these missions are told through comic book panels, almost kind of like Max Payne style. And um, there are periodic choices. Like, for example, I went to recruit a new party member, and they were like, what's your relationship with this party member? Is it a rival, like somebody you don't get along with? Is it your best friend? Or is it like a romantic but the way it does it is it's setting it up to tell a story throughout it so like if you choose the romantic option it's not like oh it's your lover it's like it shows your character being like i think i like that person you know like i you know like this weird thing where it's like it's like setting up the hook for the story to go through with it um I didn't play long enough to hit this, but I've, I've read plenty of reviews and heard people say that, like, it actually gets pretty in-depth with those choices. Like, for example, if you if you choose loot um, and when you get the loot, you assign it to somebody and you could assign it to one person. The other person could could get greedy and they could be like, hey, you really should have given that to me. Or you can get to these story moments where you kind of make the wrong choice where it's like, hey, should we spend 10 days fixing this tower that we just got rid of all the monsters or should we just keep going and leave it to the locals? And your choice there starts to affect other people in the party. And, and it, it starts to become like a really good storytelling mechanism. Um, and the combat's pretty nice too. Um, it's, it's, it's very D&D-esque. You know, you've got like, they call it two actions, but it's really like, you're probably going to move action and then attack action. They did different party types. The magic guy, um, actually his main way of doing magic, at least from what I saw in the first hour or two, is is interacting with objects. So it's not like I cast Firebolt. It's like, I'm going to interact. I'm going to pick up that chair and throw it on this guy. Or I'm going to pick Ooh. up that 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 log out of the fire and it's going to explode into cinders. Um, so it gave these like really nice dynamic stuff. Um, I didn't play more than an hour and a half of this and I kind of dropped it. I'm not going to pick it up anymore. Um, again, not through fault of the game. <laughs> it's just not for me. Uh, <laughs> um... I wasn't crazy about the turn-based combat, nothing against the game. And also it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like any text heavy, any other text heavy game. It's a lot of reading, you know, there's no voice acting in it. It's the comic panel, like I was talking about. So it's a lot of, I'm going to get my story through reading this stuff. And I don't know about you, but I'm just not crazy about text heavy games. Um, did you so refund I it? Of, uh, I did refund it. Wow. It part of that money to buy the Islanders about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm okay with that. I mean, I literally played it for like an hour 30 and then I was like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm going to, I'm going to do the nice thing. I'm going to give the copy back so that they can sell that copy to somebody else. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that digital, <laughs> digital copy. The other, okay. Look, I know, I know my segment's running long here, but folks, I sampled a lot of games. 
The next game I sampled, Psychonauts 2. Is any either of you touched Psychonauts 2? I, it's another one that I know of anecdotally. I haven't touched it. What about what about original Psychonauts? I have osmosed various bits of the plot from pop culture, but gotcha. Yeah, uh, Psychonauts was something I never really touched, um, but I played the first four or so hours of it earlier this year, and I I liked it. It's a bit dated, and so I I didn't keep playing it, but I I enjoyed the four hours. Really good storytelling, really good characters. Um, Psychonauts 2 is getting a lot of praise, so I picked it up. I played about two hours of it. I'm probably not going to play any more of it. I, I again, not through fault of the game. Well, a little bit. A little bit. All right. It Psychonauts 2 has great characters, has really good dialogue, like quippy, funny, has some cool environments, but from... It's weird, okay? It's weird because I played four hours of Psychonauts and then I picked up Psychonauts 2 and it it felt like nothing had really changed. Like, you have, like, the same powers and it's the same enemy types. And even though there are new environments and they're still pretty crazy environments by normal, like, action-adventure standards, it's still, like, it it did not feel like a 2021 game. Yeah. You know? You just just hate Tim Schafer. No, Grim Fandango I, 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 is a fantastic game. I've been meaning to play that. Um, You'll hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, it's just like it's just like Psychonauts two with all the praise it was getting. I expected it to really pull me in, and the story and the dialogue and the characters were doing that. But then I got to the actual gameplay and it was like, okay, so this is just kind of like a, I don't want to call it generic. Like the environments are fantastic, but when it gets to the actual gameplay, it's just like, hop, hop fight these two enemies, hop, hop, you know, it's not, and it doesn't feel that great. So mm. it was a little disappointing there. There is a game on this list though, that, that, that really sucked me. And I played about five or six hours of it and it's called next space rebels. Have you guys heard of this game? You were tweeting about this. I think a couple of weeks yes. ago. Yes. That's it's the reason just... I know it. Yes. I've heard. Yeah. It. It came out on Game Pass. I heard about it from uh, Vinny Caravella over at Next Landers describing it. Um, well, let me put it this way. Look, in this game, you're building model rockets, you know, out of like cardboard tubes and stuff. And then you launch the rockets. But the the I don't want to it's not even really a frame story because it's kind of like a central core mechanic to this is that you're not just building these rockets. You're building them specifically to take videos of them to put them up on your YouTube channel. Um, And when I say that, I mean, like the entire interface is just you logged into your I'm going to keep saying YouTube in the game. They call it StarTube, but like 99 percent of the interface (laughs) is just YouTube. It's cra- I I love it that they stuck with it so much, but like you're literally just logged into the YouTube interface and you're just like, but you're like getting messages from people and they're like, hey, I saw your your video. That's really cool. Hey, if I send you my sister's teddy bear, can you can you put that on a rocket? And you're like, sure. Then it's like new challenge: launch a rocket with a teddy bear strapped to it up to fifty feet or higher. And you're just like. Okay, and then you launch it, and then you, like, go to publish the video, and it's literally, like, fill out the title, fill out the description, add tags. That's awesome. And then you publish the video, and the progression in the game is just, like, how many subs do you have on your channel? That's that's the progression. Is And you and so, like, you, could do, you can do a little tag game where you're, like, trying to combo them to find, like, oh, you did three gross tags, so that, so that, that, that gives you a gross combo or whatever. Um, and then, it, but it gets weird because, like... Like from the beginning, you start getting pulled in different directions. Like there are some of the YouTubers, like like the guy I mentioned, who's just like, "Hey, I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send you my sister's toys. I hate my sister." And you're like, "Cool, these toy videos are doing good." <laughs> and then your friend is just like, "Hey, I don't know if you've like checked out the kids section of of YouTube, but it's it's really weird and kind of sketchy. And maybe you shouldn't do like the kid videos anymore." And then you kind of have this like, it's not like a clear choice, but it's literally like you're sitting here going. That's a really good point, but I do have some kid toy missions that I need to complete, but I don't have to complete them, you know, and then and then you're sitting there and it's and you're like, I don't have any parts. And like somebody messaged you and they're just like, hey, man, I run a junk channel. We pull junk out of the pond. How about we send you junk and you put it on your rocket? And you're just like, 
okay so then now you're friends with some junk junker youtube channel and then there's like this company that's like hey here's a part here's a part and then like somebody else says like hey do you have a sponsorship with them because they're saying that like like you're an official partner of theirs and then you're like no and you message them and you're like hey uh uh why are you saying we're partners i thought you were just giving me free parts and they're like no the, what do you think getting the free parts like it's this weird <laughs> crazy thing like it fully captures the youtube meta and it's so good. It's and then there's like there's FMV because there's like there's a couple like rocket model rocket YouTubers that are big. Like one of them's Rocket Girl, and I think the other one was like Mr. Lars or something. So like you're following their videos, and then like this is how good it this is how good the game was. Was that it like an hour and a half in you get a message from rocket girl and rocket girl's your hero she's the <gasps> biggest in the and you're just like i would literally said that i was like oh my god i got a message from rocket girl and then i was like oh wait this is a video game i mean it's not real but she's the whole reason i got into model rockets and and then they're doing like crossovers and you're doing these things um i'm not gonna finish the game though the game has a <laughs> the game has a <laughs> okay look look the game has a huge problem though this one actually has a huge problem when you design the rockets is it's this, all 2d on. is this like a kerbal oh, okay you're explaining it never mind yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's all 2d um it's it's actually the interface changes but it's basically like 2d like you take a part and you're like put this part here okay put a part on top it doesn't snap or anything so you can literally just be like cardboard tube cardboard tube cardboard tube at weird angles and it just welds them together when you when you go to launch the rocket i love it but the problem is when you launch the rocket um at least at the beginning you don't control the rocket. It's a model rocket. You just launch it, right? And then later on, you can be like, oh, I control the separation. So I, if I press a button, these two parts separate. But then they start doing these challenges that are 3D challenges. When you launch the rocket, it's in 3D. So like there was a challenge that was like, put the rocket in the dumpster. And I'm like, okay. So I build a rocket in 2D and I go to launch the rocket and it's like falling away from me or falling towards me. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do about that? I'm not controlling the rocket. I can't build it in 3D, but it's launching in 3D. So it kind of gets to this weird problem where I, I, the last 45 minutes of the game that I played, I just beat my head against like two or three challenges over and over again. And I wasn't succeeding in the challenges because the rocket launch was going wrong in 3D, but I couldn't solve it because I'm only building in 2D and I can't control the rocket. So it was just like, it kind of hit this gameplay point where I'm just like, this is, this is stupid. So even though it's crazy good, even like when they launch the rocket, it's hard to describe. It's it, when you launch the rocket, it's like you're looking through like a really crappy camcorder. And the way they did it, as far as I can tell, is they went to these locations and they took 360 degree photos and then they put like some heavy blurring and pixelation on it. Mm -hmm. So, so like, like it's, and then it's through like the camcorder and it works really, really well. Um, like the game looks phenomenal great story but the mechanics just ground to a screeching halt a couple hours in uh, i i highly recommend playing those first couple hours it's fantastic but it was just very frustrating when it literally hit a point where i'm like you are not giving me the tools to be able to solve this challenge like there was a similar challenge where i had to it was in a building and i launched the rocket and it had to go through a window and i just every time i launched the rocket it would go a, a slightly different direction. You know, I could kind of control it by changing the mass on and which side it was on. Yeah. But it would be like launch it and it would be like, oh, this time it's going to go to that corner of the room. This time it's going to go this way. So I literally just had to sit there and relaunch it like 20 times to get it to th go through the window. And it's, it's like, if I have to do that over and over again, you're not giving me the tools to properly control or build these rockets and yet giving me challenges that kind of require me to do that. I'm not going to spend time with you anymore. Um, <laughs> it was upsetting. But crush crazy cool concept, crazy cool concept, and they implement it really, really well. I highly recommend. It's on Game Pass. Y'all should go check it out. It's really cool. Sweet. Um, I know y'all are done talking to me, but guess what? I got one more game. I just started it today. It's called Metroid Dread. Ugh. Um, shout outs to GameFly. GameFly has these used game sales every now and then. Hashtag ad. Hashtag just I kidding. wish. Pay us, Wait. Gamefly. I didn't yeah. think Gamefly was still around. They're still around, 
they're not they're not great, but they're still around. Yeah, so they they have used game sales where they basically take some of their rental games and they sell them to you with the case and everything. I would not do that for any of the disc based consoles because I bet those things are scratched to hell and back. But Switch is a cartridge. So every time those sales pop up, I go and I look at the Switch games and it's always it's almost always like my little pony uh, next island adventure or whatever, you know, just like real crappy games. But they had Metroid Dread for 40 bucks and that game just came out. It's a Nintendo game. Those things never drop in price. And I was like, okay, so I bought it. Um, I played the first hour and a half, two hours today. Uh, it's really good. I like it. I mean, have you guys touched it or, or what's your guys' experience with Metroid games? I have played as Samus in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> that counts. That counts. I, I, played, it. I played like 45 minutes of Metroid and maybe an hour of Super Metroid. I played okay. a little bit of Metroid Prime on the GameCube. Gotcha. I think I played like a half hour of Fusion when it came out for the GBA. Um, but I'm I'm really enjoying this. I I I think what it does really well is the map is incredible and you really need it because the levels start to get pretty intricate. There's like you know there's like it's common to gate areas in levels to be like oh you can't go to this area yet until you get this this type of tech or this mm-hmm. weapon or this ability. Like, again, I'm only two hours in the game, but I think so far I've come across like four or five different gate types as in like this does that gate. This does that gate. This does that gate. So you really need the map Um, and and you can open the map. You can put markers down on the map. The map, it'll, it'll do like a slow reveal where it'll be like, oh, there's stuff here, but you haven't found it yet. Or you can look closely at the map and be like, oh, there's a hidden secret here. I can tell because of how the map is. The other cool thing is you can um. Like I, I, I unlock the charge beam, which is one way to open a door. You now have a charge beam. So there's certain doors that if you do the charge beam on them, it opens the door for you. Whereas previously you couldn't open them on the map. It tells you the door type. It's a charge beam door. So I hover over it and then I say, show all of these. And now all of those on the map that I found previously are highlighted. So I'm just like, oh, that's right. There was one up there. There was a charge Ooh, beam door. Up there. I like it that. makes it super easy yeah, to backtrack. Good. Um, I've gone through two boss fights. The boss fights feel pretty good. My biggest complaint so far, though, and I looked into it, I don't think I can change it, is... Okay, so let me just describe the, the, the control scheme to you. The plus button takes mm. you to the start menu. Makes the sense. home button takes you to the switch home menu. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the B button is jump. Uh, y is shoot. Missile is hold down right bumper and then press Y. So, I'll, so you I'll can be, sh- it. you shouldn't. And okay. then, and then you're doing targeting, which is just kind of like 45 degrees with the, and then you have to hold down the left bumper to do uh, like fine targeting where you get the full sweep. So basically if you're in the middle of a boss fight and you need to target something with a missile, it's hold down left bumper, to do targeting, hold down right bumper to switch to the missile and then press the Y. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I'm, I'm getting used to it, but it is a lot of like fiddle fiddle when it's really just like, just throw, just, just like there's missiles are all throughout the game. The main weapon is all throughout the game. They're beam cannon or whatever it is. So just have those as two dedicated face buttons, but they didn't do that. They have you hold right bumper and it's, and it's, I'm getting used to it again, but it's, it's annoying. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Solid game. It it also does some really good things where it's it's a side scroller. It's a Metroid, but they do a lot of cutaways. Like you'll be in the world and you'll do something, and then it'll just do like a very quick cut to like something in the world changing as like a cinematic or a cutscene, and then back. But instead of like, there's too many games that are just like, okay, we're now going to load you into the cutscene, or even if there's not a load, we're going to have some sort of transition and mm-hmm. then an extended cutscene. But no, it's just like side scrolling. Ooh, something happened. Three second cutscene. Okay, now back to the world, and it's just like really good. Um, and the boss fights are are good, but they're also dynamic. Like for example, uh, the second boss fight, I was hammering my head against it. Probably took me like 15 times to do it. And um, there was a certain phase switch between like a second and third phase that I was doing uh, one way. And then I noticed that there was like there was like a parry opportunity. So I did it the next time I got the parry 
and it triggered this completely separate sequence of cutscenes and events with me like because I parried I hopped on the boss's head and like rode it around for 20 seconds and then the whole time I'm just like mashing the fire button and literally just like putting the gun against their temple and firing <laughs> like like in a cutscene but you know like I don't I don't want to call it a quick time event but it's like like a cutscene that you participate in versus it doing the normal boss fight. I mean, eventually it gets back to the normal boss fight, but it's like there are opportunities for you to, to kick things down a different fork and yeah. do extra damage if, if you do certain things. Right. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, it's, it's weird out of, out of the five games I've got listed here that I've all played uh, uh, Metroid dread. I'm definitely hopping back into next space rebels. I did play, I played like five or six hours straight of that game. Really good but it kind of kicked me in the nuts and the other three, no offense to those, but, but I bounced off of them. So wow. that's just a very, very long, very long winded way of saying <laughs> I've been playing a lot of games this break. You have, and been. I think I found at least two that I, I really enjoyed and spent some time with uh, Metroid dread. You got that uh, physical version of that, right? Yeah. Sweet. I, I still have, it. I still have origami. King. I, f- I found oh, it in yeah. my switch. You should probably give that back to me. Or play it. Um, I'm declaring this a, a news-free week because I don't think any of the news is newsworthy. But also, I have two stories to tell. Uh, one of them, as Jake kindly reminded me in sign language just now, uh, is the library story. Um, I went to the local library here in uh, Las Vegas. And um, I went and got my library card. And wouldn't you know... They have video games for me to It's rent. beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. And I I looked at the games and I thought to myself, if I had a Wii and a Kinect, I could enjoy these video games. They didn't have, they didn't have anything newer than that? So I I went to there's two libraries in my town and I went to the smaller one, but and it was also in the young adult section but it was all Wii and Wii U games and like 2013 Xbox One games and I was just like oh nice um that that sounds like they started the program ran it for a little bit and now yeah. it's just stagnant and they're not buying any new games yeah so the main branch maybe might have more I have no idea but I the only one I thought about renting was uh Super Mario 3D World if it hadn't been remastered and I already owned it uh, for the Wii, but that was like the only good game there. Every, everything else there was some like generic motion mm-hmm. game or something like that. Um, I, I will say one of the few downsides to moving to Florida is that I talked about this this year on local chat. I went to the library in Baltimore when I still lived in Baltimore and they had a PS5 copy of Immortals Phoenix Rising. Like they had up to date games and I got it there and I played it that way. Uh, and then I moved to Florida and apparently the Duval County uh, libraries don't have video games at all. And I was just like, dang Ugh. it. Damn it. Yeah, I, I used to be I not against libraries. That's the wrong word. But I like I, I like buying a book and owning it like that weird part of my brain. Uh, but when I went to the library, I was like, you know what? I like there's some books that I just like eat up in like. 24 hours and i would rather get those from the library than pay for them mostly like jack reacher book where it's like amazon's like give us 15 bucks for a paperback when i could go to like a used bookstore get it for 250 or i could request it from the library so i don't know i think yeah. that's pretty good uh, my other story is i have recently become obsessed with uh turning bad game boys into good game boys um so i ordered some parts and I turned one of my Game Boy Advances into this, uh, sorry, audio listeners, into this sweet thing. Um, what is that? It, so I bought, the only thing it has from the original Game Boy is the motherboard and those components and some of the uh, silicone pads. But everything else I bought online from uh, Handheld Legends, uh, it's got a beautiful, beautiful IPS screen. Looks um, like it. I put I got this uh tempered glass thing separately. It's got a tiny crack in it that I didn't notice, but it's off screen, so it really doesn't bother me that much. Um it it's um I don't know if you can 
you tap there's a touch button that you put down mm -hmm. uh, so you can change the brightness and then you can Ooh. touch up here and you can change wherever it is you can change the colors uh for like uh game boy color games or game boy original game boy games um that's cool uh i forgot how tiny the game boy advance is oh it's it, like, little feels so small in my giant man hands um so yeah, i enjoyed that so years. much <laughs> i enjoyed that so much that yesterday i purchased stuff to uh fix my uh sp my ags 001 which isn't the good sp and i ordered yesterday and it showed up today which is amazing um and so now i have this little famicom uh oh. sp with oh, also cool. an absolutely gorgeous screen that I can change the colors and all sorts of stuff. So cool. Um, yeah, it's man. I'll have to show you in person, Ian, the difference between video, like visual quality is absolutely insane. Um, these between okay. like the original screens and even the AGS 101. Like, no ghosting, no nothing. And I already own both these SPs, but, or SP in advance. So it's, it's, but even with that, it's like an $80 investment just for the piece. Yeah. And if you can find like a cheap Game Boy and stuff, it's totally worth it. And it was like, relatively easy to do that. Yeah I, yeah. I think, unfortunately, is that cheap Game Boys aren't really around anymore. The prices are going up like crazy. Yeah, but you can, you can find plenty, um, cause I was doing some eBay searches. You can find plenty of AGS 001s for the SP, and then for the Game Boy Advances, you can find, as long as the motherboard's intact, like, there are plenty with scratch screens and stuff that are super cheap. Because um, mm -hmm. that doesn't matter, because you're just replacing it anyways. Um, yeah, so I, I had a blast with that. Um, oh yeah, I added a, I added a USB-C battery to this. Ooh, and onboard double A's. Nice. The SP, I just still have the original lithium because it was not bulging, thankfully. Um, but yeah, super fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. Handheld Legend, they're not sponsoring or anything. They're just the site I used. Uh, so definitely go check them out. I, I think there's other sites that do it too. They also do it with all the Game Boys, Game Gear, Switch. They do stuff with N64, um, all sorts of stuff. So definitely really cool. Um, I think that's about it. That's all I got. Old games and Game Boy changing. Cool. Yeah, that's about it. I'm going to start playing the music. I got to hit the button. Oh, yeah. Oh, give it to me. Boys, I sorry. I'm still in like lazy local chat mode because we were recording them. And then, you know, it's my vacation week and I don't care about anything. I finally have a normal sleep schedule again. Um, I'm not sick, which is nice. Um, cause I kept waking up with a dry throat and you're like, am I sick or is Go this going to, going to be gone in like 15 yeah. minutes. And then, then you drink water, you get your, you get your coffee and you're all good. Um, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Uh, I've been your host, Will Crosby below me has been Ian Gibson oh. and next to him has been Jake Terrio. Um, next week, folks, live and in person on the internet, we'll be doing our Game of the Year picks. It is uh, our top three games and some shout outs, so definitely come and check that out. It's going to be fun, uh, and we're going to have a good time doing that. I'm I, I'm going to say that the Banner Saga came out this year, and just, you know, I'm just going to throw that up there. Um, and also, Far Cry 6 won. Can you believe that? Oh. And skyward sword hd from ian wild pick God. wild pick there folks so bad. Um, so bad you know i woke up in the middle of the night after you called me an idiot for buying far cry 6 and i woke up sat up straight and i went skyward sword i was like why didn't i make fun of ian for buying skyward sword you idiot um that's fair that's, that's fair. fair anyways folks thank you so much for watching and we will see you all next week